What's up? I am live here in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. So cool. Luke is has been sleeping for the past, mm, I don't know, since I've been home, but now that I'm going live on a video, Luke has decided to jump around the kitchen to catch a fly. So, that's cool. <laughs> Let me know when you guys are on here. Make sure you comment. Um, I won't call you out or anything. I just want to know who's watching. Plus, You'll have to prove to me that you were watching. That way I can send you the PDF I've been talking about. And also make sure you guys can hear me okay. If not, let me know. Um, and we'll get started in about one more minute. I like to give everyone about two minutes just to kind of log on because sometimes Facebook is weird. And then I'll start afterwards. So we can just sit here and stare at each other or you can tell me if you're watching because I see one person watching. But also sometimes there's like five people watching and Facebook doesn't tell me, so anyway. Um, okay, we still have a little bit of time. Now, I do want to mention, you guys don't have to take notes or anything. I'm going to be talking like nonstop this whole time. We have a lot to cover. This is why I wanted to do a live video instead of like, you know, just a, a picture post or a video post. I wanted to go live because I wanted to interact with you guys and I um, I feel like we have a lot to cover. So anyway, I'm going to wait just one more second. Not one more second, but a couple more seconds. And welcome to my kitchen, my sanctuary. This is my second desk or office room. I have... The room upstairs where I teach my classes in, and then I've got my uh, my kitchen that I do all my recipes in. So, um, once you guys get on, let me know that you're watching. I'm just going to check and make sure everything is good real quick. What's All up? Right, cool. Thing. Everything's working great. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. It's been almost three minutes now since I've gone live. Um, so today's video, just in case you might have missed it, is over meal prepping. And everything that goes into meal prepping, what I eat, um, why I meal prep, benefits of meal prepping, blah, blah, blah. So I want to cover the not so exciting stuff and then I'll get into some recipes and what I use and why I use it and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so first I want to talk about the why of meal prepping. I think that meal prepping is something that seems much harder than it is. I think that even giving it the title meal prepping, it, it brings along a lot more than it needs to be. Meal prepping is cooking. That's all it is. Um, because you do it anyway. You cook your food and then you've got your leftovers right there. You've got a meal prep. So why I meal prep specifically is I don't really have a lot of time to cook my breakfast and lunch during the week. I like to cook dinner at home. I'll explain that in a little bit. But breakfast and lunch, I... Um, well, actually, sometimes I cook breakfast. Anyway, um, I don't have time to cook all of my meals. So time is number one. Number two... I mean, I don't know if you guys are going out to eat during this pandemic, but all of your ingredients are going to be healthier at home. That just is what it is. All restaurants, most of them, which I still eat out at restaurants. I'm not a psycho like I used to be about that stuff because I did used to be pretty crazy about where I eat and, you know, what I ate. Um, but a lot, a lot, a lot of restaurants use vegetable oils to cook all of their stuff in. Um, and that vegetable oil is really high in omega-6, which causes inflammation of the brain, which can then lead to a lot of other issues. So it saves you from going out to eat. Now, again, a little bit is okay. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to cause that inflammation. But, um, you know, just, just that's another thing. And then money, you're gonna save money. I know that um, 
and I will get into more of that, kind of what, what I eat and how much it costs, but you do actually save more money just eating at home rather than going out to eat. Um, and then, this one's a little bit personal. I have learned to cook through this process. So instead of, you know, I used to go out a lot to eat. Um, I was the person who would go eat Subway for lunch and then have a salad and then blah, blah, blah. But during this whole thing of meal prepping, I've had to become comfortable with cooking, which I think is another problem that we face is cooking is a little overwhelming and um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's grown, I've grown as a cook, I've become really, really comfortable with cooking things like steak, which I never thought I would even come close to cooking, I mean, I've got it down to medium rare, perfect, let me just think, okay, um, and then, what, okay, so before I get into all of the other stuff, like what I'm cooking, I kind of want to talk about three different things, so, as far as meal prepping goes, whatever you're meal prepping, I think variety is key. And I will show you the variety I'm talking about in just a little bit. I've covered it all up. I will move you closer to that in just a little bit. Um, making stuff that you like is really important. Um, I had a conversation with one of my clients today. She was talking about how some of the Christmas dishes that she likes to make are really fattening and they tend to be higher in carbs, and I was like, girl, you gotta just go to Google, <laughs> and you gotta type in, you know, like, low carb, blah, 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 sugar-free, blah. There are millions, if not billions, of recipes, healthier recipes for a certain dish. So if you like something, look it up, you'll get your recipe. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys saw that nacho dish that I made, I love nachos. Pablo loves nachos. Um, it's it's something that we we feel for nachos. We love them that much. And so I went out. I got some grain-free chips that are low-carb paleo. I got some raw cheese. That way it wouldn't screw up our stomachs. And I made the chicken from home and, you know, came out to be nachos that you would get from a restaurant. So there is always something that you can do. Always. Um... And then my last thing before I move on to the more exciting stuff is in your meal preps, in your cooking, it is key to focus on the protein and the fats. Now, before I go into this little snippet of stuff, I'm not a registered dietitian. I hope you guys know that. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just giving information on what I do specifically and um, just some stuff I've learned from doing the research that I have. So, protein and fats. Focus on protein and fats in your meal preps. Um, I am somebody who eats little, a very, very low amount of carbs. I am in the process of healing an autoimmune disease, so I don't do well with carbs. I just, protein and fats is what I usually stick to, and I feel fine. I never have, like, low energy. Like, I feel great without carbs. And when I do eat carbs, I get really bloated. I get really weird digestion, um, heartburn, I get headaches, I get just muscle pain, I mean it's it's a whole thing. So now, going back to what I was saying about the protein and fats, carbs are not necessarily an essential nutrient for everybody. And if you are going to add carbs to your meals, then it needs to be anywhere between 25 to 35 grams, especially if you're not active. So I kind of view it like you earn your carbs. That, that is something I have, um, I firmly believe in. If you are more active in a day and you know when you are, then have some carbs. And if you're not gonna be so active during the day, then keep it a little bit lower because those carbs are gonna cause a spike in your blood sugar and it's not gonna keep you full. Income, protein, and fats, especially fats. And this is from Self-experimentation, just give me one more minute and then we'll move on to the food. But I have been experimenting with a very high protein diet, a very high fat diet, um, level protein and fat diet, you know, just like going all over the place. And what I have learned is I need more fats than I actually think. And let me tell you why real quick. Fats support all of our hormones. 
every single one of them. If we're not getting enough healthy fats, something in our endocrine system is going to be a little bit screwed up. Most of the time, that's what happens. So eating healthy fats is really important also for brain function because most of our brains are made up of fat. Okay, so fats are really, really important and they're going to keep you full. You might notice if you've got like a high protein, high carb meal, you don't really have any fats with it, like say a cheeseburger and fries. I'm just doing the typical, you know, American meal. Cheeseburger and fries, that's high, high protein, high carb, right? The bun and the meat and then the potato fries. Um, wait about two hours, you'll start to feel hungry again. You should be able to go about three to six hours in between meals without feeling like you need a snack. Okay, so moving on to the really exciting stuff. Um, it's not that exciting, but I am gonna scoot you guys, see how far I can get you without moving everything else. So, I want you guys to ask me all the questions you want, like you can ask me what I eat, um, you can ask me what I'm cooking tonight, I mean, I, I want to like, you know, I want to go into it on here. So, okay, here I bring you what I, everything that I need to meal prep with. I'm going to start with my meat. So, I, I like to consider myself... Uh, or my diet or my way of living animal based protein diet so I will always be eating an animal protein at every single meal if not a couple at one time like steak and eggs for example um, and then I like I said I'm currently healing an autoimmune disease so I'm slowly adding in like starches like uh, squash and zucchini um, adding in some apples currently. Um, if you want to know all about that, you guys can ask me on a separate video, but um, just for right now, let's, let's get into the meats. So I have chicken drumsticks right here. And the reason I pulled all of these out is because I want you to see all of the variety that, all of the variety that meat can give you. Okay, so you've got your chicken drumsticks. I've got chicken thighs, which I love. Um, I've got a big chuck roast, okay, I've got burgers, okay, and then this is breakfast sausage, and I did not pull out the fish, the eggs, and I did already um, cook some steak for the week. So look at all that meat, that's a lot of meat, especially for two people, this is for Pablo and I. So all of this costs a little under $100 with the steak, the fish, the chicken drumsticks, the chuck roast, the thighs, the breakfast sausage, and the burgers, a little under $100. That's a lot of food for a little under $100, okay? Um, also, you guys have probably known, or known this already. I, this video is definitely going to be longer. It's going to be about 20 minutes. Um, but I spend my extra allowance on food. I am a firm believer in, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you know, that's why I'm a little crazy, but I'm a firm believer in spending, you know, a lot of the, well, I wouldn't say a lot of money, but a good amount of money on my health. That's really, really important to me. So, um, I try to get good quality meats, grass fed beef, I try to get organic chicken because the non-organic can contain antibiotics, which can cause inflammation, but you can find organic chicken anywhere. It's the same price as regular. And then um, I don't eat a lot of pork, but I do love breakfast sausage. Um, okay, and then I want to talk about a smoothie real quick. So I have a blog, um, and this blender... I got as a Christmas present, usually blenders go for a lot of money, so um, yay me for getting it for Christmas. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen my smoothie blog, but I talk about the Fab Four method by Kelly Levesque. She puts a fat, a protein, a fiber, and a greens all in her smoothie, which I will add on to that PDF if you guys are interested, just let me know. And it comes out to about six to 700 calories per smoothie. So that's a healthy meal right there. So if you're interested in seeing the ingredients, I can grab them over there. Just let me know. I'll grab them. 
okay? And then, I don't know if you guys heard me talk about variety with, um, with your meal prepping, but this is what I meant. So, look at all these dressings that I'm pulling out. Okay, I've got some barbecue ranch. I've got some ketchup. I've got some non-dairy vodka sauce. Uh, barbecue sauce. And then I've got some honey mustard. And what's not pictured is like salsa verde. Um, some red enchilada sauce. Okay, so that's like what? Eight different kinds of dressings. That's eight different styles of a meal. So with my chuck roast, I will maybe put some steak sauce on it or I'll put some barbecue sauce on it. That is usually really good. Um, with my burgers, I eat the ketchup with it. I'm a ketchup snob. I can eat an entire bottle in two days. And I get the Primal Kitchen brand for everything, everything dressing, everything ketchup. You can get it at HEB, Target, Whole Foods, Sprouts. Um, it's not going to contain any bad oils or added sugars. That is what I recommend for dressing, nothing else. I've checked them all. Get Primal Kitchen, it's worth it. Okay, invest. Think about investing in your health. Um, what was I saying? Oh, and then my, my, uh, my chicken drumsticks, I might put some honey mustard on it, I don't know. Um, I might put some, definitely not gonna put any vodka sauce on it, but I also might put some buffalo sauce on it, okay. Um, and then, what else? Breakfast sausage, I don't need anything for. My chicken thighs, I'll just put whatever. You know, you have to add some spunk into your meals, okay? Now, on to, real quick, I want to talk about plastic bags and plastic in general. We're going to wrap up here shortly, okay? I won't be talking for too much longer. This is a what's called a Stasher bag. The, the company brand is called Stasher. And it's a silicone bag. Now, I don't know if you guys have read my blog on plastic, but I am totally against it. Um, I think it's okay every once in a while, but am I going to be, I maybe drink from a plastic container or straw or whatever, maybe once a month or twice. Um, you know, and that also depends on if you're going out. Now, I would obviously use a straw because the cup is going to be dirty and it's not going to kill me using plastic once. But here's the thing about plastic. When you heat it up, um, it gives off these chemicals that can cause a range of problems in your hormones with inflammation. I know I've been talking a lot about that with different things, but if there's anything... I will never ever use in my life, it's going to be plastic. Um, it just contains too many bad things, especially for women, because it's a um, plastic contains estrogen. And if you already have estrogen problems, whether you are pre-menopause or post-menopause, you're still going to get the effects of plastic and it's going to harm you. Um, now again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I have done a lot of research on plastic use. use. So, this is what I use. I don't use a lot of plastic bags. Um, they have paper bags that you can get that will seal up. You don't have to get these expensive stasher bags, but um, yeah. Um, and then I will put this in the PDF for those of you who, uh, who want it. But I'm just going to show you kind of like the different bowls I use and, and glass. So this is going to be for like, I don't know, probably steak. So I'll put some steak in here because I don't need that much steak. Steak is a heavy meal to eat. So I've got that. And then let me show you a big one. So in here, I might put some eggs and some other meat, eggs and steak, or I might put um, some salsa verde chicken, you know, the shredded chicken that I make and make this like a soup bowl. Okay. Glass, glass only, no plastic. Get rid of your plastic. This whole set that I'm showing you, it's much more. It's up in the cabinets. Most of it, they've got little squares like this and this. Okay. So you have multiple sizes. Um, if you're going to get one brand, 
Pyrex is like $35 for a set of like eight glass dishes. That's plenty because you can wash it and then use it after you've already used it. You don't need, I feel like you don't need more than eight. Um, just, just make the investment in it. Stop using plastic, okay? All right, I'll send you the blog if you really want it, okay? Um, and then just other stuff that I brought out was this cupcake pan. Um, we're not going to be baking cupcakes, and I don't use this too often just because I'm not like a, an egg muffin person. I don't really like that. But I made a really good egg muffin recipe the other day, which I'm going to share in the PDF, and this is what I use for it. So I'm sure every single one of you has one of these, but um, you can make egg muffins with any sort of meat and put it in there. And then, of course, a crock pot live, breathe, die by a crock pot. Okay. Love it. We'll never get rid of it until it breaks. I use it maybe two or three times a week. It's so easy. Um, yeah. What else do I have for you guys? Um, um, and then of course, if you guys have any questions, like if you're watching this later on and you come up with questions, let me know. Um, some ideas for meals, like I said, those dressings, and then just focus on protein and fats, and then add a little bit of carbs if that's your thing. Um, and then one more thing, as far as dessert goes, I'll be honest with you guys, I have dessert every single meal. Every single meal, I eat dessert. Life is short. I eat pretty healthy. I maybe cheat just a little bit. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that because that's just how I am. Kind of crazy. <laughs> Everybody in the health and wellness field is crazy. I just hope you guys know that. I keep saying that I'm crazy over and over. I hope people don't think um, that I'm actually crazy. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I do have dessert every meal because I'm like, well, why not? You know? So I've got some dark chocolate that I keep in the fridge. I will have maybe my keto pumpkin blondies on hand, which I can send you the recipe of. I'll have my keto chocolate chip cookies. And again, the keto is so easy to find. Um, I just use monk fruit or you can use erythritol or you can use allulose. All of those are sugar replacements. So those of you who like to bake goods, um, just get the sugar substitute. And then instead of cooking with real flour, cook, cook with almond flour or coconut flour or cashew flour or pecan flour or tiger nut flour, okay? So much to choose from. And then also lately I've been really digging sauteed apples with sprinkled cinnamon. So what I'll do is I'll grab a scoop of butter, I'll put it in my little pan, I'll chop up my apple, throw it in there, saute it for about five minutes, that way it's a little bit soft, plus it makes it easier to digest. Sprinkle cinnamon, tastes like I'm having like a holiday dessert. I mean really, it's that good. Apples, and it's a Granny Smith apple, of course, because those are the lowest in sugar, okay? All right, wow, um, I planned on a 15 minute video and here I am, 10 minutes after 15, still talking. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this live. I hope you learned something from it. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you did attend this, it I, I can't tell if you did or not, so I'm going to trust that you'll just send me a message and be like, hey, you know, I was there for your meal prep video. Um, please feel free to ask me whatever. I appreciate you guys listening and learning, and I think it's really, really easy and important. And because of meal prepping, I have fallen in love with cooking. Um, I know that's not for everybody, but I will say that you got to get over the whole cooking thing. <laughs> you just got to do it because, you know, that's what it is now, right? At least now you have an excuse to cook all the time because of the pandemic. So, all right, that's all I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you tuned in because I can't tell. And I will talk to you guys later.